Okay, we're going to do this one more time for the people at the back. Uh, I've seen a lot of people commenting on Facebook that they're, the masks are dangerous, that you end up breathing your own CO2, and that can be toxic, that it can be dangerous. Uh, I want to show you that that is not happening. You're not endangering yourself. Uh, and I've got a few things here that I'm going to show you and some science that I'm going to share with you, some simple facts. Uh, the first piece that I've got, uh, this is a pulse oximeter. I'm not sure how focused that is, but this is going to be on one of my fingers, like so. And we'll turn that on, and it's going to read uh, my blood oxygen uh, saturation levels. So that uh, top number that's going to show up is the blood oxygen saturation level. Uh, 98%, that's pretty good. And my pulse rate on the bottom, about 69 to 70 somewhere in there. 98 is good, they suggest between 95 and 100. It's an average healthy person, no COPD, no breathing problems, no severe asthma, that sort of thing. Uh, lungs not damaged from smoking, that sort of thing. So that's what we're going to look at in a little while. I'm just going to take that off and set that down. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to use here today, uh, my handy dandy cloth mask. Yes, this has been cleaned. It's adjustable so that I can put it on fairly easily, it hooks over the ears, and it also has uh, a flap that you can put an extra layer of cloth in there uh, or a thick filter to help uh, block a little bit more. That's, that's going to go on in a minute. Uh, I also have a plastic bag here, just a regular plastic bag. I'll show you that in just a minute. I also have a balloon, a little happy birthday balloon from a previous celebration. Um, I'll get to that. So, uh, to break things out, the atmosphere that we breathe, the air that we breathe, is comprised of about 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and then another 1% of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, uh, H2O, water vapor, argon, and other trace elements. So, pollution, pollen, stuff like that. Um, so information that I found out from NASA, that's, that's where I'm getting the information on uh, what air is made up of. And I'll be putting that in the description of the video. Uh, so if you think about that, in the 70s, back in the 70s, you'll see those pictures on, uh, on the web. Pictures of cities, urban scapes that are just clouded in with that brown, horrible ground level pollution. Uh, it was terrible. It, was really really bad in some cities and yet with all that pollution carbon monoxide and, and hydrocarbons spent hydrocarbons and such people were still able to breathe they were still able to get enough oxygen into their blood that they were able to breathe and stay alive so that's a good thing I did a little more research and found out that the average lung capacity of a an adult human is somewhere between four and six liters so that's four and six liters volume. Uh, so you've got two lungs. When you breathe in, the diaphragm extends down, expands the, the lung cavity, the chest cavity, and expands the lungs. You draw in a breath, and you get about four, four to six liters in. That's dependent on the size of the person, their level of health, etc. To give you a visual idea, uh, this is a four liter jug, sorry, four liter jug of distilled water. I'm not really going to do anything with this, but I mean, this is nearly as big as my head. So that's a that's a fairly sizable comparison. Uh, four liters is a is a pretty good volume uh, to draw on. Four liters of water weighs about four kilograms. Thankfully, air is not that heavy. Um, now, if you're thinking, what does this have to do with anything? Well, when I put my mask on you'll notice that the mask sits not like a bowl holding something in, but it sits against the curvature of my face. And so there's not a ton of room in there to contain a ton of air. So if I'm breathing in, if I'm inhaling four liters of air, then what's happening? Well, it's coming in from somewhere. It's coming in around the mask, it's coming in around the top, it's coming in at the sides, 
and it's going to come in a bit at the bottom, especially for me, because I've got this beard here that acts as like a, a little air filter. Not for small particles, but definitely for uh, some heavy dust. Because um, I have worn something like this drywalling, and yeah, my, my beard gets pretty messy. So the other interesting thing to realize, so four liters, this little mask tucked against my face um, is definitely not containing very much of that four liters capacity. Uh, basically, it's making a little hat on top of there. So in other words, you're not holding back very much air when you exhale. There's not a ton of air that you're breathing that's going to be trapped in the mask. You're actually forcing that through the mask and out around the mask. So what happens when you inhale? Well, the air is going to get in around the mask so that you can breathe again. This is why doctors, nurses, anesthesiologists, dentists, uh, car detailers, drywallers, etc., who wear masks on a regular basis when they're working, aren't passing out and falling over within minutes of putting the mask on. And some of those uh, drywallers, uh, people working in paint booths and stuff, they're wearing an N100 respirator, which is uh, a much better seal around the, around the mouth and nose. Uh, has filters that uh, allow air to pass through, but not those particles of paint because they don't want to be inhaling those. Uh, they're a little bit harder to breathe in than, than just a, a regular cotton mask. So there you go. That's four liters of, of water. Um, make sure the cap's on. That's the only way that mask is going to hold four liters capacity is if I balance that bottle, that jug, on top of the mask. Anyways, enough about that. Um, how do we know that to be true? Well, if I grab a balloon, get a good breath, that's not bad, it's a little bit smaller than the jug, but you can see it is, it's a pretty good size. Uh, so I'm probably, I'd say I'm two and a half to three liters maybe. Um, Again, still, but, uh, that mask is not holding very much of that air in. So that, that air has to go somewhere. And when you inhale, it's got to be replaced by something. So, clearly, that's what's happening. So, I'm going to put on the pulse oximeter now. We're going to take a look at that again. Those numbers are going to come up in a moment. And they're going to show you what my blood oxygen level is, my blood oxygen saturation. Again, 98%, 72 pulse, and waving my arms around a bit and talking, so my heart's working a little bit more. Now I'm going to put on this mask. I'm going to see if I can hook this on with one hand without having to take the uh, pulse oximeter out of, out of camera. Um, and I want to get that Canadian uh, maple leaf up right, because I don't want to hang that upside down. That would be disrespectful to our, our uh, emblem. Oops, my arms slipping down there. There we go. So I've got the mask on. Uh, you'll notice that the blood oxygen level has gone down to 97. I'm just going to move that off to the side there. Um, so when we breathe out, when we breathe in, again, that 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% CO2, H2O, and other stuff. Uh, when we exhale, we're exhaling about 15 to 16 percent of that volume of oxygen. So we've only used five or six percent of it. Not a big usage. And this is an important thing to remember because even when I'm breathing back into this mask, there's enough oxygen. Even if this was holding on to all of the air that I breathe out, it's still got 15 to 16 percent oxygen in that air. My lungs are only going to need to use five to six percent of that. And now, I'm breathing out more than two and a half, three liters, far more than this mask can hold. And what's happening? Well, I'm using up some oxygen, but I'm exhaling some too. That's why when we used to perform mouth to mouth, we take in a breath, we didn't use all the oxygen. We could then expel 15% of oxygen in the breath that we exhale, into another human being and help resuscitate them. So that's important to remember. 
that oxygen is not just disappearing with every breath. We actually only use about a third to a quarter of it. So we're taking in oxygen, nitrogen, and other stuff. We're using a small percentage of the oxygen that, that comes in. We're breathing some more out. And as you can see, I've had this mask on for a little bit, uh, a couple minutes, and my blood oxygen uh, saturation level goes up and down a little bit, uh, 98, 97. Pulse rate is still pretty good. Everything seems fine. Um, now, some of the numbers may vary a little bit depending on your health, depending on whether you're a smoker, whether you've got asthma, things like that that have an effect. Um, so I looked into other things. What is a dangerous uh, or worrisome blood oxygen saturation level? Well, everything I seem to find indicates that between 95 and 100 on the blood oxygen saturation is about where you want it to be for a nominally healthy person. Should be between 98 and 100 uh, for most people, and that's going to be a good rate. Now, depending on your activity, what's going on, uh, the amount of air in an area that you're, you're working, that's going to have an effect on how much oxygen is getting into your blood as well. Uh, diet, pre-existing conditions, things like that. Um, below 88 on this reading, if you go into the hospital and they put this on and they, it's down at 88 or lower, they're definitely going to put you on oxygen because oxygen is needed for regular brain operation and to supply oxygen to the organs, to the heart, to the lungs, kidney, liver, pancreas, all of that. All of your body, your muscles need oxygen. All of that needs to be done. You'll notice that it keeps bopping around between 97 and 99 here, depending on what I'm doing. So an oxygen level below 80% can actually start harming major organs. So if you have a blood oxygen level that goes down below 90, 88, that's where the hospital starts to get really concerned. They'll put you on oxygen. They'll put one of those little hoses under your nose, the little feeds. What that's doing is just pumping pure oxygen in while you're breathing. So it's adding an increase of oxygen that your lungs can use to oxygenate your blood. Not a big deal. If your oxygen level doesn't go up, though, you'll notice they'll put one of these on you, and they'll, they'll measure your blood oxygen saturation the whole time you're in there. If it goes down to 84, alarms start going off because they want to make sure that before you get below 80% blood oxygen saturation, they're doing something proactive to get, blood ox to get your blood oxygenated to save your life, to make sure that you don't suffer major organ failure. So what are some of the signs of low blood oxygen uh, saturation? Well, lightheadedness, dizziness, weakness. Uh, you're going to find it difficult to exercise. When you, when you talk to uh, climbers that have been up to extremely high altitudes, fatigue sets in very, very quickly at the thinner air levels because their, their body isn't able to get as much uh, oxygen into their blood as easily as they do when they're down closer to sea level. So you'll notice climbers that go up places like Everest, because the air is so thin, they now have to supplement their breathing with oxygen to make sure that they're not going to pass out and die up there. Unfortunately, some of them have. So now that I've given you a lot of the science and a lot of the information about this, what I'm going to do next is show you what happens when you do deplete the oxygen in the air that you're breathing. And I've now had this mask on for four or five minutes at least, maybe longer, and you'll notice my blood oxygen saturation level. has It's gone as low as 96. I've been looking at it, and it's gone up as high as 99. So I'm in a good range, and you'll notice that fluctuates. Fluctuation, you don't need to worry about it. And I'm a bad breather. I have some very bad breathing habits. I tend to relax and concentrate on things and stop breathing probably longer than I should. Um, if you're a, a respiratory therapist, you'd probably sit beside me and want to smack me every time I stop breathing. Um, can be a little disconcerting. Uh, and you can tell, I don't know if you can see it, but when I'm talking, 
and I exhale, you can see my glasses fog up a little bit. So we can tell air is getting out around the, the mask. It's getting out. It's going in and out around the mask, not so much on the cheeks. Those are fairly snug, but definitely in that gap around the nose. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you actually do something that depletes the oxygen level. This is why I've got the plastic bag here. So I'm just going to take a good breath. I'm going to breathe into this bag, inflate it, and then I'm going to use it to rebreathe the same air for a short time. I don't want to take my blood oxygen levels too low. Obviously, that's a dangerous thing to do. When I start feeling just a little bit of lightheadedness, and when I see that number tracking downward, downward, I'll let go of the bag and I'll start breathing normal air. Okay, I'm starting to get a little bit lightheaded. That wasn't very long. You can see uh, I'm down to 93 there, blood oxygen saturation. My body was starting to cue me to breathe harder because it wasn't getting oxygen into the blood. And I'm down to 92 now. So that was down as low as 91. So that was several breaths. That was quite a few breaths for over a minute. Rebreathing the same amount of air, the same air going in and out of my lungs over and over again. So I'm using 6%, let's say 6% of that 21% of oxygen. And then I'm breathing out. Oh, and it jumped up to 99 there. I got some good breaths and my lungs re-corrected started processing oxygen like crazy it said hey we gotta we gotta get some blood out to the muscles here so you can see i had to take pretty extreme measures rebreathing into a sealed plastic bag to get my blood oxygen level to drop far enough that actually could start causing harm you'll notice i had the mask on for four or five minutes and there was virtually no effect on my blood oxygen level. Uh, so again, is the mask harming people? Well, if you have severe eczema or skin condition where a mask riding against you, against your skin, uh, the effect of nylon, cotton, maybe uh, you know more likely nylon than anything, will the mask harm you? might give you a rash, 
might get a little bit uncomfortable behind the ears, but where it counts, it's not causing you any harm. So if you think that the mask is harming you, think again. Uh, you got to watch it live real time. It was not causing me harm. Still isn't causing me harm. And I wear a mask like this some days for three or four hours at a time at work because we're required to wear them when we're moving around the building. So, wear a mask, do everyone a favor, and help prevent the spread of COVID-19 and other diseases until the medical community can really get their head around what's happening with COVID-19, how it spreads, how to reduce it, and most importantly, how they can best treat patients that are in the highest risk groups to improve their survivability when they do contract it. So thanks for watching folks. I know that was a long video. Hopefully it was educational and uh, have a good day. Peace out.